You probably know me as a pretty unemotional guy in crypto. You know me as the person that focuses on data. You know me as the person that focuses on long-term blockchain analytics for long-term investing into Bitcoin, for example. You know me about making very objective, very rational decisions. Now, you might have noticed that recently I do publish more videos on, uh, let's say, rather questionable investments, right? I'm talking about meme coins. I'm talking about very low cap cryptocurrencies. And you might be wondering, am I becoming one of those random crypto YouTube shillers that buy a big bag of a very small altcoin that then promote that altcoin on YouTube to push up the price to then sell and make you losses. That's what's commonly happening on YouTube. We are tracking all kinds of influencer wallets in the premium community of this channel. We are tracking them. We look at when are they buying, when are they selling. And in 80-90% of the cases, the influencers buy before they publish a video and they sell just after publishing once the price rises and they brought all this additional attention to the cryptocurrency. Am I doing the same here? The answer is no. I never ever pump and dump any coin on this audience. I never do it. Whenever I talk about the small micro cap, I don't buy it before. If I decide to buy it, I'd buy it several hours after publishing the video. I think maybe there's even something illegal about this, right? It might be considered insider trading. It's maybe not as regulated yet in crypto. And maybe the people that currently do this in YouTube, they have no problem whatsoever. There's nothing going to happen to them. But I don't want to be in that camp. I think it's morally wrong. And I don't think when you're building up a following, right? When you build up people that trust you, that you have to do this. You can actually monetize that way differently, right? You can help everybody generate alpha. You can help everybody to generate some knowledge edge that brings us some capital and that simply smarts out the rest of the market. You don't have to be the person that front runs your own audience. That's my approach to this. Now, why do I then recently publish so many videos about meme coins? Is there potentially with very hard thinking and own justification, some kind of universe where investing into a meme coin is actually the rational choice. Could we make that case? Could there be a rational case for buying into a draw coin, for buying into Cock Inu, for buying into any of those very strange cryptocurrencies that clearly are just a joke and that don't have any utilitarian value? Now, if there is any rational justification for buying this, then it has to come from the idea that you still make money from it, right? You don't just buy this for emotional reasons or for the joke, right? A joke is not rational, at least in the investment world. So you need to still make money from it and the money has to come from somebody else. And since I don't dump on my audience, I still want to make money. I want to make money from other people that buy into that cryptocurrency. It is in the end player versus player. Buying meme coins is player versus player, but actually not only buying meme coins, even buying a house can be player versus player. Buying a stock can be player versus player. Whenever you expect return that is above the market average, then you try to build up enough skill to time the market better. You try to figure out where is actually comparatively a low, where could actually be a high. And when you're selling for the high, somebody else thought it will rise further, right? You estimated the situation uh, in a better way than somebody else. And because you made that better estimation where the price might go, you will in the end outperform. So it's still player versus player. You still take away return from others if you want outperformance over the general market, over just buying Bitcoin or, or over just buying the S&P 500. That's the fundamental thesis. And with meme coins, that's even way more amplified, right? Because there the expected return realistically is zero. There is no real expected return in a meme coin. So when it's player versus player, how can we expect a return when overall nobody wins? If we are not simply just front running and creating our own trend. The answer is you want to do analytics. You want to find out things about the blockchain. 
about those transactions, you want to gather knowledge that most other people do not have. You want to find out the people that historically, for example, made very good calls on those meme coins. Are they also buying in? When are they buying in? You may want to get alerts whenever they buy something new that you can then also have a look at this and maybe buy yourself. But you want to see what are the very, very big guys doing that made already millions and millions of dollars. Are they currently potentially selling? When are they selling? Whenever they are selling, you probably also shouldn't necessarily touch it because even though they might not be right always, they might be right directionally, right? His historically, they had been right. And of course, there is a luck component to all of this. And simply, some whales simply just become whales because they got lucky, either within crypto or even outside of crypto. But there is this component in crypto, right? Where skill matters. If you can estimate where momentum is going based on more information, based on blockchain analytics, if you can estimate it better than the rest, you've got an edge. You can tell the highs and lows better. And so over time in crypto, money, despite the volatility, moves from the not so skilled people to the very skilled ones. And so since the money flows to the skilled people, on average, the people that already have a lot of capital, they also tend to have more skill. And so you can simply just take that simple proxy, right? Whenever there is a whale that's doing a transaction on a meme coin, and when they historically made very profitable calls on meme coins, even though they might have been lucky to a degree, they might, there's also probably a component of skill involved. And the likelihood that you do pick up some of that skill simply just by association, simply just by tracking them, is relatively high. The more of those people you track, the more of those values uh, of those wallets you track, the more likely it is when all of those people agree on buying something that it might be a good call. So instead of just following your random friend that told you, hey, I just recently bought this meme coin, have a look at it. Instead of just uh, buying whatever is currently being uh, shilled on a news website or even here on YouTube, right? Instead of doing this, the main thing that I think brings most value is to improve your analytics skills. And the reason why I sometimes come up with those very strange meme coins that have them on the radar when others don't yet is simply because I do that analytics, right? I check who is currently buying, how evenly distributed is the holder base? Is there maybe a huge whale that might dump? Is there maybe a huge security flaw that could rug pull everybody? You can remove some of the risks and by removal of the risks, you obviously increase also your personal expected return. If you just randomly distribute into all kinds of coins, you don't do any scanning whatsoever, you might fall for a rug pull, for example. But the likelihood goes down when already a lot of the token is held by many, many different holders, even though it's early. And when there is no security flaw, as in unlimited tokens can be minted, or there's a blacklist, people might get uh, forbidden to sell, or maybe the tax can be changed and suddenly when you're selling, you have to pay 50% tax or even 100% tax. Right? There are some security risks that you can already circumvent, making the frequency of 100% losses on those bets definitely lower. So is it rational to buy into meme coins? Only if you believe that you are more skilled than the average meme coin investor. Now, why would you ever do this player versus player game when the expected return is zero? Because with stocks, right, you've got real pro productivity there. With Bitcoin, you've got real long-term adoption. People use it as a savings vehicle. You've got long-term expected return. So why not get just into the assets that have long-term expected return? Why ever go into an asset like a meme coin that has zero expected return, where it's 100% player versus player? The reason is that the competition is less, is weaker. People that get into meme coins tend to be the newbies in crypto. They tend to be newbies in investing in general. And that is good to a degree because then it's easier for you to build up that skill edge. It's easier to time the top of a meme coin than it is to time the top of the S&P 500. That's why you can have an information edge uh, against most other people the weaker your market is. I learned this in poker. I used to be a professional poker player. I don't share that too often on YouTube. I have a little bit of a video in my private community in the premium membership about this, but I don't often share this. So I paid my study fees 
um, everything with online poker. When online poker was really big, more than 10 years ago, um, I played like 20 tables at the same time. So I played on Poker Stars. For those guys of you that are, um, or that used to be uh, poker players, I played the short stack strategy, a very simplified strategy. You can simply just grind and grind and grind, do a lot of different games. Over my poker career, I played more than 2 million hands. And because you have so much volume, you get an expected return that's positive when you are skilled and that expected return, even though there is volatility, even though there is risk, that expected return will play out fine for you if the sample size is high enough. Similar to a casino, right? If you've got an edge in roulette and you win in 50.5% of the cases, even though you might not win over 100 games, you're probably going to win over a million games. This is how poker works. And this is also how trading works, right? You need to have an expected value and you do have your wicks, ups and downs, but as long as you have a skill edge, things are fine. And in poker, that's why I make now this analogy, in poker you've got also different skill levels. Some people know their game relatively well, others don't know it at all. And then you've got the super mega, really good players, the sharks that uh, make all the gains, right? And that are really, really hard to beat. And what you notice is that the lower the lower the big blind, the lower the, the amount that you're betting. Um, when, when a game only is about $100 online, it's way easier to make money than when the buy-in for a game is, say, $10,000. Because the people that play poker for a long time, they accumulate capital. And so whenever you play for more money, you tend to have more skilled people on the table. And so you tend to win less per game on average. Your edge tends to be lower. So when you play online poker, you have to play with very weak players for very small amounts first. Do this for long enough until you win. And as you see a consistent win rate and your bankroll goes up, that's when you then go to the tables with higher big blinds. Then the competition goes up again. You try to beat this again. You learn more. You try to become better. And then you climb up the limits this way. In investing, you could see it the same for, for different levels of the game. As in, meme coins is the easiest game because there's all the, the beginners that get in. Then you've got smallish altcoins, also relatively easy. When you go into predicting Bitcoin, it's a bit harder, still comparatively easy. But once you try to predict, say, where the stock market is going or even where the currency markets are going, then all bets are off that it's pretty much impossible because then you've got the really big quants against you, right? Those big quant hedge funds and winning against those super Einsteins of the world that make millions and millions uh, every day, potentially. But you're not going to have a chance. So this is how you have to think about this. There is a rational reason to get into this zero-sum player versus player game, and it's simply just to level up your skills, to make your first gains, and to simply play against weak players. Now, if you found this perspective new, if you haven't heard about this yet, feel free to give this a like and also share this with your friends. Would be very much appreciated. And of course, if you're new here, then feel free to subscribe as well. See you next time. Cheers.